Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day. God only gave us so many mornings. We ought to thank Him for this. Uh, what a good time to sleep. Uh, they say the devil will rock you to sleep on Sunday morning. Good time to sleep. Appreciate you being here. Glad to see y'all. Uh, if you will, those that can and will stand as we read uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. You be a Mormon. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says, Therefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for thee. Mr. Gibbert, we pray for us. Thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house, Lord. Lord, thank you for each and every one who came out, Lord. Lord, please, Lord, just open our hearts and minds so we can accept the message that you got set for us, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Appreciate it. You may be seated. I appreciate you standing. Uh, I think one of the greatest questions ever asked was in that, uh, Acts chapter 16. The Philippians jailer said, and he said, what must I do to be saved? And the greatest answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in their house. We used to sing your old song up there uh, in the mountains by McCain, is God saves old sinners. Uh, Mr. Howard LeVan, he used to sing that. He used to sing the drunk on the street, the rich in the palaces, the poor, and a learned man of degree. I'll have a soul. They all need uh, salvation, and they all have to come by Calvary. But I'm so glad I saves old sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed how he sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that he was saved. No sinner like me. Appreciate that. You know, the good Lord uh, saving us and talking about salvation today. How saved are you? I mean, people have questions, you know. Uh, so we're going to look at some verses in the Bible. Used to sing that little song, Precious Jesus. I talking to that woman looking for a place to cross. You know, she uh, she knows uh, somebody waiting on her. She's saved and will be saved. Sing that song, uh, Precious Jesus, Sweet Rosa Sharon. Now, peace and triumph when I speak your name. I mean, uh, just refreshing as the ocean in the desert. You know, today, we talk about salvation. Talk about what Jesus done for me. You know, he, we were saved to the uttermost. He saved me from the guttermost. I was uh, down to the point where I couldn't save myself. And he saved me to the uttermost. What does that mean? He saved me. I'm completely saved. Well, I'll talk about God's plan to save. Uh, he said that he has a plan to save because, therefore, he's able to also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God. You know, his plan is to save. He come to seek and save that lost. He don't want anybody to perish. I mean, I would hate to, to miss heaven sitting on a church pew. Missing heaven by 18 inches. Having it in my heart, but never having it in my head, but never in my heart. Never truly trusted in him. Because God has a plan to save, and it was a costly plan. Mark 10, 45 said he came and gave his life a ransom for many. And heaven glory came down to earth in the form of a servant. Philippians 2, chapter 2 said he was obedient, even obedient to the cross. He came to die for us. And 1 Peter said you are not being redeemed by silver or gold, but something a whole lot more precious by the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm thinking that. You know, completely plan on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. You know what that means? Paid in full. Paid Nothing I can, nothing I owe, nothing I can do. If if I could have done anything to save myself, Jesus would not have to come and suffer on the cross. If I could never be good enough, I never could pay enough. I could never be good enough. It's a free gift of God. It was a controversial plan. John fourteen and six. He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." In Acts four uh, four twelve, said, "He's the only way." 
And no other way. It's not by church denomination. It's not by good works. It's by not by having your name on the church roll. God's power to save. He says here, therefore he is able to save them. You know, he has that power. John 6, 44 said, no man come to me except to God. The Father draws me. You can't get saved any time you want to. People say, I'm going to wait till, you know, I'm a little bit in my older in my age and when God's not dealing with me, uh, you can't get saved any time. You have to be drawn. You have to be convicted. You have to be brought into God. It's a work of God. It's an eternal work. He got a power to cleanse you. John chapter 1, it says, you know, we are uh, confessor uh, sins. He'll cleanse you from every sin, every shame, every stain of blood, every blemish, every failure. He has a power to change your life, 2 Corinthians. We are a new person. Uh, ask uh, Barmaeus. Ask the blind man. Ask the disciples. Uh, he will change your life. Ask the woman at the well. He will change your life. That is an uh, illustration of a changed life. How do you know somebody really got saved? Look at their lives. Have they made a change in their life? God promised to save. He says here, he is able to save. He promised to save. You know, save them, keep them from their uh, self, to rescue from danger and destruction. Save from the deadness of it, your sin, from the wrath of God, which is hell. People don't talk much about that anymore. Uh, wasted life. You know, you know what? The same, we uh, read about the rich man in hell, he lifted up his eyes. He says, I have brothers. Send someone. Jesus on the cross, then he died, ascended, getting ready to go to heaven. Guess what he said? Send someone. The same message from hell and the heaven is send someone. Tell them about Jesus saved. That, that is the gospel. The gospel means the good news. It's good news of Jesus Christ, his birth, uh, his death, his resurrection. His promise in his work. He's ever made, he ever liveth to intercede for us. And the promise of his will. You know, he's able to save to the uttermost. But I want to talk about today about being saved. We are saved from the penalty of sin. No more guilt, no more shame. We don't have to deal with sin anymore. But we, he said we also can be saved from the power of sin. Uh, the, the, the penalty of sin, that's justification. You know, you can do something to me and you can commit a crime to me and say, please forgive me. Well, I will forgive you, but guess what? You still may have to go to jail. You still may have to go to prison. This is more than forgiveness of sin. This is a pardon. This is justification. It means just as I have never sinned. He imputed his righteousness on you. You are justified just as you never sinned. Uh, and that is, we, what uh, we go by that, uh, uh, we always look at uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. That is one of the things we always look at. It says here, Ephesians, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself it is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. The Greek really says, for by grace, you have been saved. You have been saved. And that is justification. That is the past tense. And that provision was made by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is justification. That is in the past. You have been saved from the penalty of sin. You have no more guilt, no more shame. You have no more separation. What is the penalty of sin? Romans 6, 23 said, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. Isaiah 53 said, We all went astray like sheep. We all went our own way, turned our own way, and the Lord laid his iniquity on us own. Romans 3 23 said, We all sin. And Romans uh, 3 10 said, Were well, they none righteous? You know, Isaiah uh, 64 said, Our good, our righteousness is just as filthy rags. And one day, if you don't know what that really means, just ask me. Our righteousness is our filthy rights. We can't, We don't have nothing to bring to God. It said, nothing to in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. God's plan of salvation is greater in, in, than just giving us eternal life, fire insurance. It's more complex, much more. It's 
He come to totally redeem man. You are justified just as you never have sinned. The penalty is paid for by faith. This is paid for by faith in the past by Jesus Christ. So you have been saved by the penalty of sin. You saved from the power of sin. That is a lot of uh, people call sanctification. We are being saved from the power of sin. That present tense. People read this here. We we look at this in uh, Philippians two twelve. It says here. It says here, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean? Some of these hard verses we want to look at. What does it mean, work out your own salvation? He said you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You just as you've been justified. Now he talked about being sanctified. He talked about by the Holy Spirit, by your faithfulness. Being saved by the penalty of sin would by your faith, but this is by your faithfulness. It's just like an artist. Uh, we talked to a little girl this week. She was uh, doing a painting, and she probably had something in her mind. She probably had a picture. She began to, to look at it in her mind. She began to draw it out. And then she began to paint it. And then she began to... Uh, Sign her name to it. See, she worked it out. Just like a coach uh, got a play and he sees the team strength and their weaknesses and he begins to draw out the plan. And then he tells his team what to do. And then he runs the play. Just like a piano player, she gets a, a tune in her head. Then she writes it down on paper. Then she puts notes to it. And then guess what? She comes and plays it. She works out her salvation. Just like a builder who draws a blueprint and he began to get something in mind and then he began to measure out and then he, what does he do? He pick up the hammer and the shovel and he began to work it out. What, do, what does that mean for us? God, what, what has God, what does God put on your heart? Do you have a passion to sing? Well, I think God probably wants you to sing. God always enables you. Do you love young people? A lot of times, God will give you that love, and then he'll let you work that out. So sanctification and living for God, that's his presence. We've been justified, and now we are sanctified by the Holy Spirit. He enables us uh, to go on. It's just like a songwriter, a coach, a builder. It's just like Galatians said, to walk not in the Spirit and fulfill not the lust of the flesh. And what is uh, the, the main thing that we are here. The power of sin is the flesh desire to sin. Uh, our flesh is just bent on sinning. I mean, we are born in sin. And a lot of people uh, in this men class, we're going to try to be out of the, the box. You know, talking about Adam and Eve before they sinned, they was not made perfect. They were not sinless. They were just innocent. You know, uh, we have all sinners. We are born in sin. And uh, if he hadn't sinned, we, we would have. But thank God here it says we are also saved from the presence of sin. One day we will be glorified uh, from this world. What is the power that uh, we are dealing with? What is the presence of sin in this world? Well, it's the world, it's the flesh, and it's the devil. Isn't it? We have to fight every day the world, the flesh, and the devil. One day, like that dear woman, we're going to be looking for a place to cross. We are going to be glorified. And that is in the future by the precious uh, Father who provides us a heavenly home. And he's going to uh, provide us, uh, you know, with uh, being saved from sin, Satan, self, suffering, sickness, separation. And we use that Romans 13, uh, 11. Romans 13, 11. And now that know the time that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. What does that mean? We say, well, we have been saved from sin. We've been justified. We are being saved by sin. The Holy Ghost coming into us. 
helping us to be faithful and saving ourselves. Uh, you don't have to badmouth every sinner. You don't have to be mad at a sinner. I'll tell you why. Sin carries a big stick. Sin will bring death, decay, and destruction in every life. Don't matter if you're saved or unsaved, sin will bring heartache into your life. You don't have to beat down a sinner. You need to pray for them because their life is going to be full of trouble. Sin carries a big stick. You need to live for God. God wants the very best for you. Those, it don't, an uh, unbeliever, don't, don't uh, envy him because hell's his home. Somebody who's living for God and is not doing the right, you don't have to envy them because God chastised his own. When, when people come in my yard and the kids be fighting, guess what? Who did I whoop? I whooped my kids. You know, the whole lot, the whole house here is controlled by switches. So was my kids. <laughs> I mean, I, because you say cut their tail, I, I whooped them. I mean, we whooped them. Well, Patty did. More than I did. Last time I seen this uh, spanking the, the older boy, he was about a head high, looked Patty in the eye, and they went round and round in a circle, Patty <laughs> trying to spank her. And then he said, he said, uh, he laughed and said, let's do that again. <laughs> I mean, having boys is just a, a trip, you know. It's just but Up there, we didn't call whoop, cutting their tail, we called whooping. We just whooped. But, you know, uh, God book his own youngest. He cut their, his own uh, youngest. Uh, what did Patty say? And here I am, children. Patty said that her whole life she thought she was an onion. <laughs> I heard Daddy say, get him onions in the car. <laughs> youngest. But children, I'm going to try to be. But we are saved by the, uh, we have been saved, and I hope I'm speaking to those that have been saved from the penalty of sin. Justification, it's more than being forgiven. You say my sins are forgiven. No, it's more than that. It's just as you have never sinned. No more guilt, no more shame. You should go on. But also, you're, you are being saved by the Holy Spirit. You're working out your life by your faithfulness. By the Holy Spirit, you are being sanctified. Sanctification. You should live right. If you don't, God's going to correct you. And I have seen people, God take some people out of here early because they did not behave. God will deal with his goodness. That's a pitiful way, but uh, I know a man was saved that he just kept on drinking and his kidneys was bad. God gave him a chance after chance. He was a wonderful person. And he just kept on and uh, finally the, uh, he went to, to a doctor and they saved him a time or two, helped his kidneys and Finally, the doctor said, I'm not doing this anymore. He said, we're just going to call him hospice and let him die. A young man, very young man, and I know he was saved. I believe he had it, but he, his flesh was bent on sin. I believe he was going to take some people with him, and God just called him home. I mean, that, that's something you don't talk about. God will chastise his own. We need that sanctification in our life. We need, uh, thank God I'm justified, and thank God I have enough sense, and through the Holy Spirit, I need to be sanctified. Be a child of God, God is going to chastise us. But one day, I'm going to be glorified. I'm going to be taken out of here, and I'm going to my salvation is closer now than ever been. I mean, I've heard people say, well, all my life, I've heard the uh, promises is coming. And I said, well, you just, you just fulfilled a prophecy. In the last days, coffers are going to. I'm one day closer. I might go to heaven by the clouds. He might call me out. Or it might be by the clouds. He may, they may have to cut the sod and bury me. But I'm, I'm one day I'm going to be free from this world to sin and uh, what, the flesh and the devil. The devil don't have, you know, uh, I'm so saved as pitiful. I mean, I tell people that. Uh, I'm thankful. I mean, I'm just thankful. I'm so, I'm so loved and pitiful. You can say, well, how can uh, uh, somebody say keep doing that? 
Well, God's going to deal with them. Be not deceived. God's not marked. Mark, he will. You will reap what you sow. Out of the natural and the spiritual, you're going to reap what you sow, how you live. You might, I'm, you won't change your relationship with God. You will always be his young. You're a child, but what about that fellowship? Are you on talking terms with God? If not, why not? Have you been reading the Bible? Been letting him talk to you? Have you, have you been praying to him? Do you have that fellowship? That's what God wants. Some people worry, some people wonder, and some people worship, like he says. I mean, uh, come down here, uh, uh, but I don't want even to put my uh, application and have a title in front of my name. That, that doesn't that ain't worth no more than a tail on the back of a pig if you don't, if your heart not right with God. It don't, ain't worth nothing. I mean, if you don't have that relationship with God, Oh, it's just a waste of time. Uh, something, uh, something on the wall, uh, something you drive in on, or the cash uh, in your bank is not worth anything if you don't have that pre precious relationship with God. I mean, are you saved? Are you saved from the penalty of sin? Are you saved from the, from the uh, power of sin? Are you living right? But one day we'll be saved from the presence of sin. Uh, he's coming after us one day. He's prepared for us a home. You say, I don't know about all that. Let's uh, look at Titus chapter 2. Chapter, uh, just a couple verses. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. That is our uh, justification. In the past, by the Lord Jesus Christ, they took the penalty away. And that is by faith. Chapter uh, 2, verse uh, 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We do that by the Holy Spirit. That is sanctification. We live each day for Him, and that is by our faithfulness. That for us trying to live through the Holy Ghost the best we can with the power of the Holy Ghost leading us, teaching us, guiding us, and not by faithfulness through the Holy Spirit. But this is for, from the faithfulness of our Father. I hope you can all say that today. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you looking for that glorious day. They say blessed are those who are looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing. One day he's coming after his children. So we need to receive Jesus Christ by faith. If not, why not? Are you asking the Holy Ghost every day to strengthen you, to guide you, knowing that we're going to come to that day one day? You know, uh, it's not let go and let God. People, Some people say, well, let's go. Let it go and let God. And it's not I'm going to do everything by myself. It's that daily walking closer to God. Helping, the, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you, to enable you. And I believe you should just uh, uh, open up your heart. I read this uh, week. You know, they say that so many things are essential. Uh, trying to find a verse. I said, Lord, you know, people, I've seen somebody on there. Uh, truck. I'm an essential worker. My sister said that she was essential so she had to go to work. Then in John, I read the three must again. You must be born again. The Lord, uh, the Son of God must be lifted up. I mean, he must die for our sins. And it says here, you must, he is a spirit. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. When God said you must, guess what? You must. As far as I'm concerned, worship is essential. We need to worship him. We need to understand that we are being saved from the penalty of sin. You need to live like it. I, I thank God for that. I've been saved. I'm, I have been saved. I am being saved. And one day I will be saved. Amen. Can you say that? Did the brother come up? I want you to sing that. Appreciate the good singing today. And, uh, 
just want to sing a, a song, and we've got one more thing to do. Oh, how I love Jesus. You know, today, can you say, oh, how I love Jesus, for he saved me, uh, he has saved me, I'm being saved, and one day he will save me. I am saved from the guttermost to the uttermost. Thank God for salvation. Five hundred and sixty. Five hundred and sixty.